Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to be working with a blender. We have uh, really interesting things. Um, by the way, well, for those of you that aren't aware, we just got a blender 3.4.0 uh, released. Uh, it was released, if you're watching this on Friday, it was released on Wednesday. So like probably two days ago, um, but I'm actually recording this on Wednesday and uh, I want to show you something really, really, really cool. Uh, but before that, just a quick announcement. Remember that tomorrow we have a portfolio review. So if you are uh, submitting, this is probably the last chance you're going to have. I'm going to close the submissions late Friday, so late today. Um, so make sure to check the link down here below for the Google Drive folder. Just go in there, drop a link to your portfolio, a little message if you want, and um, we'll take a look at those during the weekend. Bad news. My internet provider is like effing up and uh, we don't have internet right now. So it's uh, been quite challenging for me to work and to record and everything. Well, not record, but to work because, well, internet is everything, right? So um, I've actually did this exercise on my laptop at home and then I brought it back here into the studio so that I can show it to you. Uh, but just be aware that probably tomorrow, uh, like for the portfolio review, I'm probably gonna be recording on a different setup. I'm gonna try to bring my microphone to get at least the best audio, but I might not be able to get the best image, uh, unfortunately. So yeah, other than that, uh, let's go. So uh, this is Blender 3.0. As you can see right here, I'm going to select with left. I usually do that. I like my uh, dark theme right here. And I'm going to load my 3.3 settings. This is the first time like I'm, I've literally brought the Blender installer to my computer so I can show you this. So um, before uh, I had the internet thing going on, I was actually wondering, what should we do? And uh, I got my book here. This is a Tome of Beasts. You guys know I'm a huge fan of D&D. And I was going around like seeing, eh, maybe we can do like a character or like a creature. Maybe we can do like a random selection uh, and, and see what we get. And I saw this monster. So this is called the Golem Bearing. Let me know if I can, let me see if I can close this thing up. There we go. So it's like a, it's like a, a, a like a golem made out of metal bearings. And I was like, that looks like something that we might be able to uh, learn from because uh, I actually don't know how we do that. And uh, yeah, learning I did. So let me show you the final result. Here's my desktop, and then I'll guide you through how we did this. Okay. So it's this one right here. So yeah, let's go to layout and let's go to render. Hit render here. There we go. Let me just uh, reopen the. Um, the word the uh, HDRI perfect. So if we hit render real quick, this is the result that we are gonna get. Uh, and I'm gonna show you again how to get it. It's it's actually fairly simple, I would say. Uh, but you need to like ask the right questions. I, I I think that's one of the main things about 3D, right? Like if you know how to ask the right questions, then it's a lot easier to get to the specific thing that you are uh, looking for. So this is a character, and the way we did it is with um with geometry nodes. Geometry nodes are this really cool thing inside of a blender that uh, you can learn, of course. And uh, the cool thing about geometry nodes is the fact that they allow you to uh, create things that would be that are procedurally made and it would be really, really difficult to to do uh, in other in other ways. Quick tip: if you want to see shadows here, you can. You can just go here. Here, you can turn on scene lights and scene world, and uh, you're gonna get like even better resolution. It's not the best one, right? Because you need to, to turn on this thing right here, which is cycles. Uh, but this one will give you a really, really accurate result. So um, in the newest Blender, in 3.4, they added this new node called the distribute on volume, which is really, really important. So let me show you the process. I'm going to duplicate this thing right here, Shift D. I'm going to just G and move it to the side. To like normal render, there we go. Yep, snapping, turn on. And this one, I'm gonna go to the modifiers and I'm gonna delete the modifiers. So this is the base mesh that I used. I literally went online. I would show you where, but I don't have it right now. I'll promise I'll do it later. I brought, I got this rig right here. Um, it's a free rig for Maya. I actually posed this guy on Maya and I added this cone. So on the image, it looks like this guy is kind of like spreading himself into like a lot of metal bearings uh, into the ground. So I thought it would be a nice idea to have something like this. And uh, once I did that, as you can see, um, I used this uh, geometry nodes to reproduce and create this thing right here. So I'm gonna guide you through the creation. So normally what you do is you select your object, you go to your modifiers and you go and create a geometry nodes modifier on this guy and you create a new geometry node. Then you jump onto the geometry nodes tab and here is where we would normally like uh, like work, right? Like all of these things right here, this is how it would work. 
And geometry nodes, uh, they, I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this. I'm not sure if it's the same thing as Bifrost. It, it looks very similar to me. Uh, but more than that, it's it's just a way to to create and, and to transfer information from one point to another. That's that's one of the best things that you can think about when thinking about nodes. Nodes are just a way to, to get information, generate information, and, and just push information, right? So right now, as you can see, our input information is the geometry, and our output information is also the geometry. So if I were to, for instance, say, let's add a, um, no, like a geometry node, and I'm going to add, I'm going to use a join geometry, right? And then I can be like, okay, you know what? I want to add, uh, like, let's add the monkey sand, right? So what I can say on my geometry node on this guy is like, grab Susan, and I want you to combine my character and Susan into a new geometry. So the new geometry that gets outputted, as you can see right here, is a combination of both geometries. You can see my character is right there, and Susan is out here. So again, at the end of the day, geometry nodes are just a way to get information, bring information, and transfer information from one point to the other. Now, the thing or the special node that we use is on this one, so as you can see, it's a little bit of a mesh, but it's not difficult. I'll show you again step by step on how it starts. So we start with our input, which is our geometry. And the first thing I need to do is I need to convert my geometry into a volume because we're going to be using this thing right here, this distribute points in volume node, which is new to 3.4, I think, um, to, well, as the name implies, distribute points on our volume. So if we go here, the first thing I need to do is grab this geometry and uh, look for volume. And as you can say, as you can see, we have this mesh to volume. So we can create a volume out of this mesh. Okay, and then we can do a random or a points uh, instance distribute points in volume. There we go. So this is what we would normally do. But if you plug this in into the geometry, you're not going to see anything. And the reason why this is happening is because we actually need to go back to this one. We need to combine our original geometry with these new points to actually see something happening. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this guy right here. I'm going to use the node that I used before, join geometry. And we're going to join the points and the geometry, and that's going to be my output. You might be like, well, I'm not seeing anything. And the answer is yes, we're not seeing anything because we need to increase the density. If we start increasing the density of the points, you can see these little crystals start appearing all over our character. And we can move like this exterior bandwidth to like 0 0.01 to really keep them really, really, really close. Now, remember, these are just points. These are not spheres or anything. These are just points that were... Um, like bringing in into the into the element, right? Uh, we can change the density, which of course is going to give us way, way, way more points, as you can see right here. I believe on this one I had something like 918 and 421. So if we copy those ones, let's just go here to like 900 points, and there we go. So we have a ton of points. Now remember, these are just points. We are seeing them as little crystals, but they're just points in, in the space, in the volume of the object. So we need to convert those points into like actual spheres. You can see right here we have a sphere, I'm going to isolate it real quick. It's a really, really small sphere. It's right there on the center of the world. That's important. And I'm going to grab that thing right there. I'm going to go here. And again, just middle mouse and drag the sphere into the into the uh, geometry nodes tab. This creates a reference to that object. So whatever happens to the original object is going to be uh, like merged and converted into the rest of the elements. So from here, what I want to do is I want to do, uh, do something called instance on points. Or uh, I just want to instance the same. So instance on points, as you can see. There we go. Now, what am I going to instance? I'm going to instance this geometry. So this is the instance that I want. And what are the points? And these are the points that I want to instance. Then once I do that and I bring this in here, and I break this thing right here, you can see that now we have both geometries. We have the original geometry and we have the sphere geometry on top of the whole thing. The interesting thing is I can actually go to this original geometry and, uh, oh, actually not that one. I can go to the original geometry and say, hey, I don't really need anymore i can just like stay with my little spheres and that's going to be fine we don't really need those points anymore and that's it <laughs> like if you want to like just finish your your uh like this little project right here and just finish your character then this is pretty much it i'm thinking about like finding a way to export this and 3d print it to have like a little like miniature uh i'm still like figuring out i i know how to export the meshes but i want to see if i can figure out how to like eliminate those spheres that are floating because those are going to be a pain to support and to and to 3D print. So you pretty much want everything to be like colliding with each other. Now, uh, the distributing of points, by the way, we have a couple of options. We have grid, which is going to create a slightly different effect. We might need way, way, way more. 
right here on the spacing or maybe less like really really small space nah it's not working properly i'll check that one but yeah there's another distribution which is like a grid distribution should you get a more like an even uh distribution along the, the faces uh but yeah this is pretty much it now i did add a couple of things to my uh stuff because as you increase the density and you increase the volume you can kind of see that some of the stuff are like very uniform looking and i wanted to add some like crazy stuff so i'm gonna delete this one because uh, that's pretty much the, the point where we add um, which is, you can see here, it's mesh to volume, distribute points and volume, a joint geometry. In this case, I am joining the geometry and then instance on points. And then this is where I get like two or uh, three extra nodes. First of all, I use this translate instance nodes. And this translate instance node, it's a really cool one because it allows me to move, like slightly move. I'm going to break the connections here. Break that one. As you can see, this is the original uh, mesh. And on the original mesh, as you can see, one of the issues that I had was that some of them look very uniform. On the second one, for some reason, we didn't get that. But in this one, we had that very uniform distribution. So if I add this translate instances and I add a random value um, to this translation, what I can do is I can have a random value on the X, Y, and C between 0 and 0 0.01. So it moves and shifts the little spheres around to give me this more... Uh, you know, geometric and uh, like interesting effect. Now, uh, keep in mind that we can change any of these things right here. Like if I bring all of the density all the way down, we can have like a really, really thin uh, like creature made out of this like uh, varying balls. We can also bring this density over here down. Let's go all the way to like 50. There we go. And you can start seeing some holes on the geometry, which very, very cool. The the All of the applications that this thing has is, is just like crazy. I've seen some... Um, some really, really interesting effects, the whole thing. There we go. There we go. Now we can play around. You could, I think you can even animate this thing, like creating itself, which will be pretty interesting. And if you move the original mesh, the, the, like the little spheres will also like move as well. Something like this looks really, pretty interesting. Let's like really, really feel it because I want to, that sort of like human shape. There we go. So, um, yeah, so it's this translate instances, and then it's this random value here to move them around a little bit. And then we have this scale instances, which does a very similar thing. I'm just changing the scale from a one to like a 1.2, for instance. So some of them are going to be smaller. I could even like make them really small, like 0.5. You're going to see that some of them are going to be really small and some of them are going to be really big. Um, and then again, adds a little bit of uh, complexity, like another level of complexity to the whole thing. And all of these are instances. You can see how how fast the viewport is and everything because we're we're working with instances. So it's not like the actual geometry. We can't convert this to actual geometry, but we're not going to do that just yet. Finally, um, on the original mesh, I assigned a material here, which is just a basic material. I just made it a metal and uh, lower the roughness a little bit. And you do need, if you're working with this, you do need to set the material to this geometry so that it knows that all of those elements are going to be sharing this specific um, material. And that's it. Once you do that, you are good to go. We can go to our render options right here. And we hit render, especially or even here in the viewport. We have this very, very cool looking uh, like a monster uh, creature thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm just gonna do a quick render. I'm gonna save the image and I'm gonna go to my laptop all, all the way in on my on my home so that I can um, upload this video and you can you guys can watch it. Um, by the way, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Blender, we do have several courses. I released a course uh, not so long ago about uh, character creation instead of Blender, and you can check it out in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check skill shirt down here below so that's it for this one guys i am just gonna as i mentioned I'm just gonna like render this thing i think i'm gonna go for something like this like a sort of like three-quarter view we can appreciate the sort of like human silhouette of the whole thing and uh yeah i, I hope you guys liked it uh, I, I think this is a really really powerful tool definitely definitely um uh, like quite uh, useful for 
things like this, like very specific things. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to upload your portfolio if you want to go for that. And I'll see you during the weekend for the portfolio review. That's it, guys. See you on the next one.